What if nations could come together, not in conflict, but in cooperation, to uplift their economies and collectively prosper? Is it a utopian dream or an achievable reality? This question led to the establishment of the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe, or UNICE, a beacon of economic cooperation among a whopping 56 member states spread across Europe and beyond. Rooted in the rubble of a war-torn world, UNICE was born out of the United Nations Economic and Social Council's desire to rebuild and unify economies. Its mission? To initiate and participate in measures that facilitate concerted action for the economic reconstruction of Europe while maintaining and strengthening economic relations amongst European countries and the rest of the world. From Armenia to the United States, Cyprus to Canada, this diverse collective of nations has one common goal, to promote economic cooperation and integration. This is the story of UNICHI, a commission designed to promote economic cooperation and integration. In the ashes of World War II on the 28th of March 1947, a new hope was born, the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe. As the dust settled and the rubble cleared, the world was faced with a daunting task. The economic reconstruction of a continent devastated by the horrors of war. The United Nations Economic and Social Council stepped up to this challenge and established the UNEC, a commission tasked with promoting economic cooperation and integration among its member states. The UNEC was not confined within the geographical boundaries of Europe. Its reach extended far beyond, encompassing 56 member states, many of which were indeed European, but also included nations from across the Eurasian landmass and even North America. These non-European members, ranging from Armenia and Azerbaijan to Canada and the United States, highlighted the transcontinental ambition of the UNEC. This commission was not born out of a vacuum. It was the United Nations General Assembly that called upon the Economic and Social Council to create the UNICE, alongside its sister commission for Asia and the Far East. The goal was to provide effective aid to countries devastated by war, to sow the seeds of recovery and growth in the scarred landscapes of post-war Europe and Asia. But the UNEC wasn't just about economic reconstruction, it was also about building and strengthening economic relations, not just among the European countries themselves, but also with the rest of the world. The UNECE was a bridge builder, a facilitator of concerted action and a promoter of shared prosperity. In its early years, the UNEC absorbed the function and resources of the European Central Inland Transport Organization, further expanding its remit and influence. This was a body that was not just about managing economies, but about connecting them, about facilitating the flow of goods, services and ideas across borders. And so UNEC was born, tasked with the economic reconstruction of a war-torn Europe. An institution conceived in the aftermath of destruction, it stood as a beacon of hope, a promise of a better, more integrated and economically vibrant future. But history is rarely without hurdles and UNICE was no exception. As we journey into the mid-20th century, we find a world divided, an iron curtain drawn between East and West, and UNICE caught in the middle. During the Cold War, UNICE faced a conundrum of colossal proportions. The Iron Curtain, an ideological and physical barrier between the Socialist East and the Capitalist West, posed a significant challenge to UNICE's mission of fostering economic cooperation and integration. It was like trying to unite two halves of a broken vase, each fragment representing a different worldview, a different economic system. In the face of this daunting challenge, two separate entities emerged. The Organization for European Economic Cooperation in the West, established in 1948, and the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance in the East, formed a year later in 1949. Both aimed to promote economic cooperation but within their respective spheres of influence. The world was effectively split in two and UNICE had to tread carefully to avoid exacerbating tensions. Faced with this new reality, UNICE had to adapt and redefine its approach. It had to be the bridge between two worlds, focusing on issues of common interest to both East and West. It was a delicate balancing act, a diplomatic dance on a global stage. Instead of solely focusing on economic reconstruction as initially intended, 
UNEC had to shift its agenda towards facilitating dialogue and promoting mutual understanding. It had to find common grounds, areas where both sides could work together without causing confrontation. In essence, UNEC had to redefine itself. It had to be more than just an economic commission. It had to be a platform for dialogue, a beacon of hope in a divided world. It had to navigate the tricky waters of international politics, fostering cooperation where there was division, promoting unity where there was discord. Navigating the rocky waters of the Cold War, UNISA had to redefine its objectives and strategies. It had to change, to evolve, to adapt. But as we'll see in the next chapter of this remarkable story, change is often the precursor to growth. With the fall of the Soviet Union, a new era dawned for UNICE. A world divided by the Iron Curtain was now merging into a global village, and the UNECE was at the forefront of facilitating this integration. The dissolution of the Soviet Union in the early 90s opened up a vast landscape of former Soviet republics, ripe for economic cooperation and integration. The UNEC swiftly extended its reach into these territories, promoting economic cooperation among its member states, while also integrating these new republics into the global economic system. The Commission's activities expanded significantly in areas such as trade facilitation, environmental policy, housing and land management and transportation. The UNECE worked tirelessly to ensure that the transition of these countries to market economies was smooth and beneficial for all involved. One of the key milestones in this post-Cold War expansion was the establishment of the Transport Division. This division was instrumental in improving transport connectivity within the region, thus fostering economic growth and integration. The UNECE also played a crucial role in developing environmental policies for these new republics, ensuring that economic growth did not come at the expense of environmental sustainability. Furthermore, the expansion of UNEC activities into these new territories also brought about a significant increase in the number of member states. From the original 18 members at its inception, the UNECE grew to include 56 member states, including the former Soviet republics, this expansion not only increased the Commission's influence, but also broadened its scope of work and impact. The post-Cold War era also saw the UNEC playing a key role in addressing global challenges such as climate change, sustainable development and digitalization. The Commission's work in these areas has had a profound impact on the economic and social development of its member states. In the changing political landscape, UNEC found new opportunities to fulfill its mandate. The fall of the Soviet Union presented both challenges and opportunities, but through its commitment to economic cooperation and integration, the UNECE has turned these challenges into opportunities, helping to shape a more prosperous and sustainable future for all its member states. Fast forward to today, UNECE continues its mission amidst a globalised world. UNECE now stands as a key player in a world that is far different from the one it was born into. It's not just about rebuilding economies anymore, it's about shaping a sustainable future for all its 56 member states and beyond. In today's interconnected world, where actions in one corner can ripple across the globe, UNICE's role in promoting economic cooperation and integration is more crucial than ever. It seeks to navigate the complexities of the 21st century, addressing contemporary challenges such as climate change and digitalization. UNICE has recognized the urgency of the climate crisis and has made environmental sustainability a cornerstone of its agenda. It promotes green economies, advocates for sustainable transport, and works tirelessly to manage water and energy resources efficiently. But UNECE's commitment to sustainability doesn't stop at the environment. It also champions sustainable urban development, aiming to make cities more livable and resilient. It pushes for housing policies that are both affordable and environmentally friendly, striking a balance between economic growth and sustainability. In the age of digitalization, UNEC has taken strides to harness the power of technology for economic development. It promotes digital innovation, ensuring that the benefits of the digital revolution reach all corners of its constituency. From advocating for e-commerce to pushing for digital literacy, UNEC is leveraging the tools of the future to build a stronger, more inclusive economy. And while UNEC has evolved to meet the demands of the modern world, its core mission remains the same, 
It continues to foster economic cooperation, promote integration and facilitate concerted action among its member states. It remains a platform for dialogue, a space where countries can come together to find common ground and build shared solutions. UNICE stands as a testament to the power of economic cooperation, continuing its mission to promote prosperity through unity. It's not just a relic of the past, but a beacon for the future. A future where economic progress goes hand in hand with social equity and environmental sustainability. So, what have we learned from the journey of UNISA? It's a tale of unity and cooperation, born out of a desire to rebuild a war-torn world. Established in 1947 under the United Nations Economic and Social Council, UNIC has sought to promote economic integration among its 56 member states, both within and outside of Europe. Navigating through the choppy waters of the Cold War, UNIC had to tread carefully, working on questions of common interest to both East and West, avoiding confrontation. Despite these challenges, it persisted, focusing on the economic reconstruction of Europe. With the fall of the Soviet Union, the Commission expanded its activities in the former Soviet republics, further cementing its role as a vital conduit for economic cooperation. Today, UNESI continues to strive towards maintaining and strengthening the economic relations of its member countries. The story of UNESI serves as a reminder that even in a world divided by borders and ideologies, economic cooperation is not just a dream, but an achievable reality.